Hey guys, and welcome back to the Inverted Blocks playthrough. Now, if you haven't seen part one, this video may be slightly confusing, so I would recommend checking it out before continuing on. And now that we have that out of the way, let's get into part two. When we last left off, I had just used the Hellwing Bow to slay the Wall of Flesh, plunging my world into hard mode. Not wanting to be overpowered by the new, more dangerous enemies that were lurking in my world, I quickly made my way towards the old corruption to smash some demon altars. Once I felt that I had broken enough altars, I made my way back to base and began searching for the new ores. However, as I descended into the caverns, I quickly realized that the hard mode ores were unable to spawn in the blocks that my world was primarily made up of, so it looked like I would have to resort to plan B fishing. Now, a fun fact about fishing, in order to catch your first fish, it actually helps a lot to have a fishing pole. So, the first thing that I set off to do was obtain my very own pole. Terraria has a lot of different options when it comes to fishing poles, but the one that I set my sights on was the fiberglass rod. After a bunch of jungle caving and a good bit of time, I managed to locate an ivy chest with the exact item I was looking for. With my new rod in hand, I set out to collect some bait before heading over to the new surface hollow, where I decided to set up shop and begin fishing. Fishing. After catching enough fish to feed an entire village, I decided to open up all of the crates that I had gotten to see if I had enough ore for a set of armor. Inside the crates, I found a large collection of useful potions, more bait for future fishing, and a good bit of hard mode ore. However, although I had enough to craft a mithril anvil and titanium forge, I did not get enough bars to make myself a full set of armor. Deciding to take a break from fishing, I set my sights on the Sky Fracture, a nice early hard mode magic weapon that would be very effective against the mech bosses. In order to craft the Sky Fracture, I would need to get my hands on a couple of light shards which drop from light mummies found in hollow deserts. And seeing as my crazy inverted world didn't really have any of those, I decided to make my own by purifying some hardened ebon sand that I had been collecting all around the world, and then placing some hollowed grass to seed the spread. While waiting for the hollowed grass to spread, I did some more fishing to finish my titanium armor set. I also took a trip to the jungle with the intention of finding a nature's gift so that I could craft a mana flower for automatic mana potion consumption. Once I was done with these tasks, I returned to my fishing spot, this time to farm pixie dust so that I could craft myself some wings. I then made my way to the mini desert that I had made and began to farm for light shards. With my sky fracture finally crafted, I decided it was time for the mech bosses. So, I picked a relatively flat area and began shaping it into a boss arena. With my brand new arena complete, I grabbed some buffs and a mechanical skull and summoned Skeletron Prime. Immediately, the boss began lashing out at me with his metal claw, taking off a chunk of my health, but I wasn't gonna let him win that easily, as I retaliated with magic swords fired from my sky fracture. Angered, Prime covered himself in spikes and began making wild dashes in my direction. Seeing the danger, I quickly flew to safety while continuing my magical barrage. As the fight dragged on, I had a close call, nearly meeting my demise, but fortunately I was able to escape his grasp just in time. Seeing what he was truly capable of, I focused my attention on not making another mistake, and after some more time, Prime could not hold out any longer as he burst into pieces. One mech down, two to go. Next, I decided to fight the twins, so when night fell once again, I summoned them to face me. I first set my focus on Spaz. Knowing the danger of his cursed flames, I wanted him out of there as soon as possible. With a good chunk of his health taken down, Spaz let out a roar as he transformed into his mechanical form. Now is when the fight truly began. Spaz immediately made a dash for me, and with the help of Retinizer's lasers, I was cornered and badly hurt. Knowing that I was in trouble, I focused all of my attention on staying away from Spaz's deadly flamethrower. With some careful dodging and a bit of patience, I was able to turn the tides on the fight and bring Spaz down. Now in a one v1 with Retinizer, I began focusing all of my attacks on him. Sensing his defeat, Retinizer followed in his brother's footsteps and transformed into his mechanical form. Although his lasers posed a decent threat, with his brother gone, he stood no chance, and after a bit more time, I was able to take down Retinizer and claim my prize. As the third night fell upon my world, I knew that it was time for the mechanical worm. As the destroyer approached, I had a feeling that this was going to be a long fight. Although the Sky Fracture performed extremely well against the other two mech bosses, because it was unable to pierce, the worm was going to be especially tricky. However, this didn't stop me from giving it my all. With the help of my elevated platform, I maneuvered my way around the destroyer's lasers, taking out the probes and chipping away at the boss's health. After a long night and a lot of fighting, I was able to prevail, even with my disadvantages. 
Now that the three mechs were taken out, I had enough hollowed bars to craft myself a brand new set of armor. However, this is where the challenge truly began. Now you see, the problem is that because I don't have a typical jungle, there's no jungle grass for life fruit or plantera bulbs to spawn on. But this I can work around. The big problems are actually that A, I'll have to fight plantera enraged because I don't have a jungle to fight her in, and B, there's no chlorophyte in my world. And this is the big one. It may not be much of a problem now, but chlorophyte means that I can't make specter armor, shroomite armor, chlorophyte armor, or beetle armor, basically taking out an entire tier of the game. But there is a workaround that I'll discuss when we get there. For now, I had other matters to attend to. For starters, because the jungle temple is not made out of brick, I decided to mine out an arena in preparation for the golem fight in the future, and it also provided me with a nice supply of wood. Next, I headed over to the snow biome in order to collect what little mud I could find. Then I grabbed a few jungle grass seeds from the remaining jungle plants in my world, and with these two items collected, I was able to make up a small jungle platform to allow both life fruit and plantera bulbs to spawn. Because plantera would be enraged when I fought her, I decided to create a rail track in order to more easily fight her. The rail track would provide me with a fast path to the surface, and an easy way to circle her much faster enraged form. While preparing for the fight, I got lucky and a bulb spawned. Not sure if my rail strategy would even work, I broke the bulb and mounted my mechanical cart. Quickly making my way to the surface, making sure not to leave the plant too far behind, I approached my minecart arena, and as the plant got into position, I set out some rain clouds and got to fight it. The continuous barrage from my rainbow rod brought the plant's health down towards half, and I began to worry if I would be able to survive her more dangerous second phase. As she burst off her outer lair, I knew that there was nothing I could do but hope. By some miracle, I was able to slip past almost all of the enraged plant's attacks as I took out the majority of her vines. With the threat mostly gone, I continued my attack, and after a good bit of time, I was able to prevail, claiming the plant's loot. Now that Plantera was out of the way, I was able to fight Gollum, but before the fight, I wanted to get my hands on some better firepower. To do so, I collected up all of the dungeon brick that was located inside the jungle temple. Then, I set out to the actual dungeon to create a spawn platform for the powerful dungeon enemies that Plantera had released. With my dungeon farm complete, I began attacking the enemies that spawned there. After a surprisingly short amount of time, I was able to get my hands on the weapon that I was after, and as an added bonus, I got my favorite light pet as well. Returning to the jungle temple with my new weapon in hand, I began the golem fight, and as the boss began lashing out at me with his fists, I used a combination of my new magnet sphere, rainbow rod, and nimbus rod to deal heavy damage back at him. With his fists destroyed and his head detached, the enraged golem began rapid firing lasers at me, while also making an attempt to stop me with his massive feet. Using the much larger than normal arena to dodge his attacks, I continued my assault. As the fight drew near a close, my HP dwindled down to dangerous numbers. In an all-out DPS race to the finish, I defeated the boss and immediately died myself, creating quite a comedic end to the fight. With Gollum defeated, it was now time to prepare for the Lunar Invasion. The first order of business that I had to attend to was upgrading my armor. Without access to Chlorophyte, my options were severely limited. I could get Spooky Armor, which would provide me with a set suited for the end of the game. However, I didn't really feel like converting to Summoner this late in the playthrough, so I instead set my sights on the Old One's Army and the armor sets that come along with it. Although none of the armor is the best for Mage, the Dark Artist set does provide you with a good bit of magic damage boost and better defense than my hollowed armor. So, that is what I decided to go for. Starting my first army, I quickly realized that my current weapons were just not going to cut it. So, I set out to find a Martian probe in hopes of finding a charged blaster cannon. Throughout the Martian attack, I quickly realized just how bad my gear actually was. But with some persistence and quite a few deaths, I managed to get my hands on a charged blaster cannon near the end of the assault. Not wanting to give me a break, a solar eclipse had started during the invasion. So as soon as I drove the Martians away, a mob of angry eclipse monsters began an attack on me. The eclipse was a bit of a blessing in disguise though, because after it was all over, I managed to get a few nice items as a reward. With my new weapons, I returned to my Eternia crystal and began another assault. This time, I was much better equipped and was able to make it pretty far. However, I was still not able to finish the event. After spending some more time farming, I managed to save up enough coins to purchase a tier 3 flame burst staff, which greatly helped in my farming endeavors. Although still unable to defeat Betsy, I was at least able to reach her, which allowed me to get 40 coins from every event. Finally able to do some decent farming, I grinded through a few more in order to get enough coins for a full set of Dark Artist armor. With the armor out of the way, I now just wanted to upgrade my my weapon before taking on the lunatic cultist. I decided that the razor pine would be a good option, so after crafting a naughty present, I started the frost moon. Now, the frost moon went just about as you would expect. 
I died a lot, but fortunately, I managed to get my hands on a razor pine pretty early into the event, which helped. So, once day came, I decided that it was finally time to fight the cultist. As I arrived at the dungeon, the lowly devouts were waiting at the entrance. Using my razor pine, I disposed of them quickly and summoned their leader. As the cultist began his assault, I began flying circles around him in an attempt to evade his attacks. And for the most part, this worked. But as the fight drew near a close, the cultist began ramping up his attacks in an attempt to save himself. And it almost worked. Worked. But fortunately for me, I was able to just barely defeat him with only a fraction of my health remaining. Now that the cultist was gone, the lunar invasion began in full force. The first pillar that I set my sights on was Nebula, so that once I had defeated it, I could craft myself some better weapons for the rest of the pillar attacks. After a long and tedious process of clearing out the Nebula enemies, I was finally able to lower the pillar's shield and take it down. Using my new fragments, I crafted up the two Nebula weapons and decided that it was finally time to take down Betsy so that I could use my my flame burst tower outside of the Old Ones Army event. Unfortunately, I learned the hard way that the Lunar Pillars can still spawn enemies even during the event, so after an untimely death, I quickly disposed of the Stardust Pillar before once again summoning the Dungeon Defender's Assault. This time, I did much better and was able to prevail. Finally, I was done with that dang event. Using my now available Flame Burst Towers, I slowly defeated the Solar Pillar, knowing that there was only one pillar left. Before taking it on, I built myself a long sky bridge in preparation for the Lunar Boss. Now that I felt ready, I headed over to the Vortex Pillar and took it down, with all four of them defeated, impending doom approached. As the Lord of the Moon arrived, I mounted my unicorn for some extra speed. Normally, I would use asphalt for the fight, but because I don't have access to much stone, I decided that the unicorn mount would have to do. As the boss fired his attacks in an attempt to defeat me, I used my superior movement to dodge his attacks and chip away at the top eye, making sure not to remove his hand eyes too early. I held most of my attacks until the top eye was open, and after a long and repetitive process, I was finally able to take out all three eyes at about the same time revealing the core of the boss. Knowing that he was in trouble, Moonlord began ramping up his assault, sending his true eyes of Cthulhu after me. Although these were very formidable attacks that managed to bring my HP down below half, using my knowledge of the fight and a bit of luck, I was able to stay alive and defeat the Moonlord. Claiming my prize, I could rest easy, knowing that this crazy inverted blocks challenge was finally over. If you guys enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to be notified when I upload more like it in the future. And if you'd like to see live gameplay, I have a Twitch channel where I stream four times a week. There will be a link in the description if you're interested. But with that out of the way, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you to Beave Notice Me Senpai and all of my other Patreons for helping make this video possible.